We've all seen tech reviews that show graphics card benchmarks and CPU benchmarks and, and they're all using games and there's usually a few different metrics that are given as, as statistics for us to sort of rate the cards or rate the processors. Traditionally, we used to see a maximum frame rate, a minimum frame rate, and an average frame rate, although more recently, we've seen that switched up a little bit to something like an average frame rate, a 1% low, and a 0.1% low. So I want to talk a little bit today about how reviewers are getting those numbers and how you can do the same thing with your hardware at home. So before we hop into the software side of how reviewers get the minimum, maximum, average, 0.1 and 1% low frame rates for the reviews that you often see online, whether it be on YouTube or in articles, I do want to go over exactly what those metrics are. Now, obviously, the maximum frame rate is the individual maximum FPS that your uh, benchmarking software sees at any time throughout your benchmark. Now, that's probably not a great metric for seeing how well your hardware plays a game because one, it's not repeatable, and two, maybe you happen to load a menu at some point throughout your benchmark and your frame rate jumped to like a thousand and then that suddenly becomes your maximum frame rate. That's the same reason that the minimum frame rate is also not a very good metric. Again, it's not repeatable and it's taking the individually slowest point of the game, which may have been a complete anomaly. Maybe it was just the game was loading a new area and it just stuttered for a split second and that's the worst it ever performed, but it dropped clear down to five FPS because it was loading something new. Who knows what the case may be? but it's typically not a great way of looking at how effective your hardware is at playing the games at any given setting. So instead of seeing the maximum and minimum frame rates given in more recent reviews, we're seeing a lot of reviewers move to a 1% low and 0.1% low frame rates. And all those are is taking the 1% or 0.1% slowest frame times and converting that into an FPS value that we can understand. Now this is a decent metric because it is repeatable because these are averages still. And we can repeat the test over and over and see that the times actually end up coming out very similar test after test. And as always, the more information you have for an average, the more accurate it will be. So if you are reviewing your own hardware or benchmarking your own hardware at home, the longer the benchmark is, the more accurate that information will be when you convert it to the 1% and 0.1% lows. So let's go ahead and hop over to the software side of things and see just how we get benchmarks run running and how we convert those benchmarks into the statistics that are actually useful to us. Okay, on the software side of things, you're going to need two different tools, and I will leave links in the description below uh, for both of these tools. The first of which is Fraps, which you may have heard of. It's a common benchmarking tool that will give us the base information we need. And the second tool we're going to need is called Fraps, this time with an F, and I'll leave a link for that download below. They're just both installers that you download and install the two uh, different programs, and we'll go from there. Now, when you open Fraps, you are going to have to tweak one setting in the uh, general menu here. So if you click on the FPS tab, uh, you want to make sure that the check mark is for frame times. You want to make sure that one's check marked because Fraps cannot do its magic unless it is uh, check marked there so you get that file. The other thing that you may want to take note of is where exactly the uh, benchmarking folder is. You probably won't need to know this, but just in case down the road, uh, if Fraps doesn't recognize where it is, you may need to open that up yourself. The other thing you need to check out is what your hotkey is for benchmarking. And the way Fraps works is you simply hit the hotkey once to start the benchmark whenever you're in game, and you hit it again to end the benchmark, and then it will sort of spit the files back out for you in this uh, benchmark location. So let's go ahead and run a benchmark. Now that we have our benchmark ran, we can pull up Fraps again and click the view button next to the folder location to give us 
the location of uh, all of the files that were just generated and these are all Excel documents however if you don't have Excel you should be able to open them in other office suite applications I would imagine I haven't tried it but being Excel documents you should be able to do that no problem so if I want to click on the minimum if I expand this the minimum maximum and average uh, document it'll show me that I ran 15,692 frames. It'll tell me in milliseconds how uh, long I ran the test for. It tells me my minimum frame rate of 56, my maximum was 83, and I averaged 71.51. Now, if I were using the old method of just minimum, maximum, and average, I would be done. And if that's all you're really interested in, you are done and you don't actually need the other application. If you do, however, you need to go ahead and open FRAF's Bench Viewer. Now, FRAFS is nice because it automatically opens the file location, or at least the default file location of your FRAPS benchmarks. So if you didn't change that from the default, it should pop open. But again, if you did change it, you may need to go and hunt those files down yourself. So what FRAFS wants you to do is drop the frametimes.csv file anywhere sort of in this big white area. So if I grab that frametimes file, which is why you need to check frametimes earlier and just drop it there, it now gives me the frame times in a graph of Overwatch and the entire benchmark run. Now here's where the magic is sort of for tech reviewers in that FRAFS will give you the average frame times converted to 72 FPS. It'll give you the 1% lows at 59 FPS and the 0.1% lows at 38 FPS. Now this is also a good visual for why exactly I can make this a little bigger for you guys, but why exactly we don't like using the minimum frame rates as a good metric. And that's because if you look up here, there are about four outliers in the entire chart that are way slower than anything else by a long, 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 long margin. Now I have no idea why these frames, these four particular frames were so slow, but that is what it is. I didn't at any point notice that while I was playing the game, but it is worth mentioning. Now, in addition to those statistics, which is when, when I use FRAFS, basically what I'm most interested in, there are a few more graphs available, like the FPS graph. This shows me uh, in a more traditional way, the FPSs instead of just the frame time. And you'll see that the minimum would have been down here, probably below 20, while the maximum would have been up here over 120 up in the top right. So those are complete outliers and aren't representative of the actual experience that I had as the game player. And this dotted line of the average, you sort of see it's going right down the line of just over 70. And that would have been a very good experience for most people playing Overwatch. And that's basically it. You can use FRAPS and FRAFS in conjunction together and basically benchmark your own hardware and see where you fall in line compared to other YouTubers that are reviewing your hardware or other tech reviews just online that use these type of benchmarks for their reviews. So hopefully you found all of this very informative. If you did, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things down below help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag, so it is just so convenient for you. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.